Okay, in lesson 14, I'm gonna show you how to use symmetry command in ANSYS, uh, which uh, the, the benefit of symmetry is that it reduces your model, hence reducing the analysis time and the labor that ANSYS has to go through to run the simulation. For example, assume that you have a plate like this. Um, if I could draw straight lines. Let's say this is, these are all straight lines. And you have a circle right in the middle, which is uh, subtracted from the entire model. And uh, you have pressure, uniform pressure, of uh, some Newtons, let's say thousand Newtons, here and here. So, basically, the model is uh, uh, being, uh, or, or the uh, object is being pulled on both ends uh, by, the, by the same amount of load, and these uh, faces, or these sides, are free to move in any direction, and you have a hole, sort of a crack, uh, in the middle of this uh, model. So, if uh, this is the center, Let's say this length is, for example, um, 30 millimeters, as well as this length is 30 millimeters. And in order not to get necessarily a uh, square, let's make this length be, um, let's say, 50 millimeters, for example. I'm just giving numbers off the top of my head, like random numbers, and I'm not really uh, focused on real uh, examples. So if you look carefully at this model, I have two lines of symmetry in here. This line, I'm gonna draw it with red pen. So this line and this line. So I can uh, model this quarter part of this model and apply symmetry in this line and symmetry in this line and reduce the amount of work that ANSYS has to go through to do the model analysis for me. Still, the load is going to remain 1,000 Newtons here and here, but I'm not going to model this half part, this bottom half part. So the load is going to be uh, 1,000 Newtons. So basically what I'm going to do in ANSYS is to draw this model. This length is going to be 30 millimeters. This length is going to be 25 millimeters, half of this. Let's give the radius of... Uh, um, let's say 10 millimeters to this arc and again the pressure, the uniform pressure on this face is going to be um, 1000 Newtons or 1 kilonewton and I'm going to apply symmetry uh, on these two lines which means whatever is on the right of this line will be on the left as well and whatever is on the top of this line, which includes this other part, this other half, will be on in the bottom as well for uh, the real model. The uh, material is going to be steel with elasticity of 200 gigapascals again, and uh, Poisson's ratio of 0.3. I'm going to do, do a 2D model, so I'm going to pick a plane uh, element and do this analysis. So let's go and um, do this in ANSYS. Okay, we're in ANSYS. Um, let's uh, pick structural for pre from preferences. Go to preprocessor and go to add um, here solid and pick uh, quadratic, let's say, 8 node plane 183. And if I don't think this. Uh, element needs uh, requires real constants. I don't think it needs so let's get back to here 
make sure everything is okay. Okay, I'm gonna change the element behavior on, from plain stress to plain strain. That's my preference. Click OK, come to material properties, material models, structural, linear, elasticity, elastic, and uh, these values for the properties of the material. Then to the modeling section, and I'm going to create key points first in Active CS. The first one is going to be in, in the origin, apply here. The other one is going to go to 10 in X direction, and then in 25 in X direction, and then 25 and 30 in Y direction. Back to X of 0, apply, and Y of 15, OK. Or I should have made 10, sorry. I'm going to come to delete this key point. Get back to create key point in Active CS and give this one 10. OK. Now I'm going to create lines by these key points. First, some straight lines from here to here, here to here, and these straight lines. And then I'm going to make an arc with end key points and the radius. So the end key points are going to be this and this line, or the key point, and the center is going to be this key point, and the radius is going to be 10. So I'm going to see OK. So uh, basically, the lines that I require are generated. So I can come to areas, arbitrary, by lines, and pick these lines, and my area is generated. Now I can come to mesh. And uh, uh, let's do size control. However, I didn't pay attention here uh, for this line. If I wanted to make the line segments smaller in this end and bigger in this end, I should have gone from uh, key point 3 to, to key point 2. But unfortunately, I didn't uh, do that. So let's come to size control, manual size on lines, and um, pick lines and pick this one first. And say divided into, let's say, uh, 10 sections of uh, 0.2 spacing ratio. Here is smaller. And uh, pick lines, this one and this one. I'm going to divide all of both of them in um, eight segments. OK. For this line, again, as I said, I made a little mistake, or uh, I didn't have a plan, but we can do this, pick this line again, and divide that into, uh, let's say, uh, 10 segments. But I'm not going to set space ratio, because it will go to the other direction that I'm not uh, interested in. Now I can come here and mesh my area free. Click my, or pick my area. Well, this is not a good mesh, so I'm going to clear it. Clear areas. Plot my area. And um, Let's, I don't know if my lines are, are sized. So I'm going to mesh here, or let's use mesh tools. I click OK. OK, this one is a bare meshing. Uh, my sizing was not uh, perfect, so I had to clear my mesh. So anyways, this is the meshing of my sample, or my uh, object, or model. So I can come to loads, come here and make sure that I'm doing a static analysis. Now define loads, apply, structural, come to displacement, and come to symmetry, BC or boundary condition, on lines, pick this one and this line and click OK. So this line and this line are the lines of symmetry for me. And then I can come to pressure on lines, pick this line, click OK, 
and put a minus thousand and again I put minus because I want to go upwards and or against the direction of the uh, uh, line that I've picked so I click, click OK so you see it's outwards com in, re in relative to the um, area that I picked so my model is ready right now I can come to solution solve current LS click OK solution is done see these uh, marks uh, show the uh, lines of symmetry in here I can come to general post process and the first thing I want to see is the deformation of my sample so this is how my uh, model is deformed based on this uh, uh, loading condition I can come to um, nodal solution and see displacement in y direction first this is how it goes and also displacement in x direction displacement vector sum as well and I can also come to vector plot predefined uh, translation so this is how my model is being uh, translated or, or deformed based on the loading that I apply to this this line is going all the way in the x direction and this line is going all the way to the y direction and if I want to come and uh, uh, if I want to see the loads or, or the stresses on uh, uh, this line for the nodal solution or nodal loads I can come here select entities pick lines click apply and this line okay select entities again nodes attached to um, lines all click OK now come to nodal, nodal loads click OK with that for that and showing me only uh, two nodes this node and this node one is um, node uh, I mean load in y direction which is probably here and the other one is the node or, or the force in x direction which is uh, this node node number five let's select everything and um, see if we can get anything from the reaction solution so these are the loads that you get from the reactions um, that you see and uh, let's uh, define a path in here along this line so I'm going to define a path by nodes this node and this node click OK define the path name I'm going to give path 01 uh, divide into let's say 80 parts number of divisions 80 I, I'm going to also set and map onto path I'm going to say stress in y direction and also deformation and uh, there's no deformation in x direction in, along this line so I'm going to say deformation along uh, y direction and let's stick with these two and plot path items on graph first thing I want to plot is SY so this is how um, my material the stresses are changing along the uh, along that path and let's also see um, deformation in y direction which is pretty small it's uh, taken into account that the unit is millimeters so it's very small deformation in y direction and uh, if I come to here plot results and I want to see the nodal solution again um, 
What I want to do here is to change my active uh, coordinate system to um, cylindrical, global cylindrical, and define an R path. Um, define path by location, let's say. I'm going to call that path. 0, 2, then 80 and 80, okay, number, point number 1 is at x of uh, 0, y of 10, okay, and point number 2 is at point of x 10, and y0, okay, and cancel this. Let's plot this path. Path 2 is uh, here. Cancel this one. Map onto path. Let's make sure that I'm recalling path 2. This is my cur uh, current path. And I'm gonna say, uh, give me Fun Mrs. Stresses for this uh, path, and let's uh, plot that. So for this path, you see the Fun Mrs. Stresses. You can also say map onto path um, U sum, so transformation sum, and uh, come to here and plot that one for this uh, path, which is a uh, cylindrical coordinate system. So I picked a quarter of a circle as my path, and this is how it's uh, uh, showing me the deformation, the total deformation of this path. So basically what I did is I came and changed my active coordinate system to cylindrical. So when I gave the coordinates of uh, those two points, the two points of the uh, quarter of the circle, that circle was, uh, that, that arc was selected for me by ANSYS, and this is the path and uh, the items I have. If I hadn't done that, let's say I switch back to active, to global Cartesian coordinate system, and define the two nodes again. Let's uh, plot my elements again. And let's define an R path just uh, and let's again go by location. I'm going to call this path 3. Click OK and go from there to here. It's definitely not going to work. Oh, I should have done this one like this. Okay, change the point number and change these, click OK. Definitely this is not going to work because I don't have any elements or nodes in this area, but I'm just going to show you how it would be if I hadn't changed my coordinate system to uh, cylindrical. So I'm going to map onto path again, use sum. says some interpolation points do not lie on the selected elements. That's what would happen if I hadn't changed my co uh, coordinate system from global Cartesian to global cylindrical. So, because I didn't do that this time, this line is in here, or this path, and there's no nodes or elements in this area. That's why I face an error. So basically, in this lesson, you learned how to use symmetry um, to, your, to do your analysis, and also how to, how to use uh, uh, cylindrical coordinate system to plot, to map, to c define a path and map items to that path and plot them uh, on ANSYS. And this concludes lesson 14.